Let's go down to Marvin Gomez from AccuWeather for more on the storm's movement. Uh, so, Marvin, we have been seeing all the video of the flooding and the damage. What is the latest with Sally? Well, just as you mentioned, this is a tropical storm with sustained winds at 70 miles per hour. And this tropical storm will continue to move mainly to the east northeast, approximately at five miles per hour. That is its current movement. We do anticipate a little bit of a faster movement, but that's not going to take place until tomorrow. And we're talking about the, the center of the storm going from Alabama into Georgia, perhaps tomorrow around lunchtime. And as we've been talking and mentioning, the rain will be a big concern. We are very worried about widespread flooding, not only in Alabama, but also as the storm continues to progress across the portions of Georgia and even into the Carolinas as well. As a matter of fact, we already have a, a flash flood watches in effect extending all the way even into the lower part of Virginia. Again, the slow movement of this system has been perhaps one of its uh, uh, key um, uh, features with the storm and uh, not a lot will be changing in the upcoming days. So some of the areas that are currently getting hit by rain, and especially in central Alabama, they still have at least another 18 to 24 hours more of rain. And uh, just as we've mentioned, the catastrophic flooding along the Gulf has been a major, a major concern. As of this morning at 10 a.m., we had at least uh, already two feet of rain. Luckily, many of the locations w that were severely hit with uh, near the landfall earlier this morning. They're already starting to clear from the rain, but they're still going to have some uh, gusty winds in the area. And speaking of the winds, we do anticipate uh, more of those uh, tropical storm gusts to continue throughout the day. And eventually tomorrow as the storm continues to weaken, we could have some winds, but they're not going to be too intense as the storm moves into Georgia. And a fun fact for you, as a matter of fact, in 2004 on this same day is when Hurricane and Ivan made landfall across the same spot in uh, Gulf Shores, Alabama. Marvin, as this storm approached the coast, it rapidly grew into a Category 2 and then downgraded. We saw something similar last month with Hurricane Laura. What are we learning from these storms? I think the best thing to keep in mind is that we cannot put our guard down, especially coastal communities. You know, just because the storm went from a two and then we were happy that it went back down to a one, the impacts really were not changing. We were still talking about life-threatening flooding across portions of the Florida panhandle. And I think this goes to show that we always have to be prepared, not only right now with uh, COVID and other things that are happening in, in this year, but just in general, we need to make sure that that we are always prepared and have those emergency kits uh, ready as well. And very quickly, about 30 seconds left, a very active Atlantic hurricane season. Uh, there's more to come. What is on the horizon? That is correct. We have one name left before we run out of names with our current list for the year, and then we will be heading over towards the Greek alphabet. And right now, we have uh, three disturbances that are across the Atlantic, and we have to continue to monitor those and also the tropical waves that are coming off of Africa. All right. AccuWeather's Marvin Gomez in Pennsylvania. Thank you so much.